everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk, where you get great interviews from great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch. Today, we have part two of my interview with Billy Sheehan. And if you saw part one, you'd probably be the only one because I lost the bloody thing. So I appreciate Billy coming back for take two. How are you doing, Billy? Doing great. Thanks. Uh, you are, we're in the same time zone. I thought the last time we chatted before I butchered and lost our interview, I thought you were in Tennessee at that time. Are you yeah, it was. I'm traveling right now. I'm in a hotel in Florida. Oh, well, very nice. Couldn't be in a better place. Actually, well, with the storm and everything, uh, were you anywhere near the uh, the hurricane? Yeah, uh, I watched it for a while. That, wow. But we were okay. No problem. That's great. Okay, so um, I just wanted to touch base with you on a couple of things. Obviously, the Suns uh, did a tour of... Uh, of uh, South America, which you did not attend for reasons which um, I think I know, and I give you uh, all the respect, and there's a lot of people on the same page, my friends, so good for standing up for your own values. Um, and right now, we're talking about the winery dogs. Um, I believe um, you've finished recording all the songs and everything. Um, you've seen the cover art, and um, the third album is set to be released. Do you have a date or, or anything like that? No dates, but I know it's coming. I heard it. You heard it. Okay. Um, so is there any, can, any, are, do you guys, have you started, is management starting uh, to plan any kind of a follow-up tour to uh, push the album after it's released? Yeah, they're booking uh, everything next year. Okay. Uh, it's already, a lot of shows already booked. So usually it's about a year in advance for major bookings. Right. So, or at least eight months. So yeah, we're, we're uh, they're booking it up now. And uh, we're excited to get out and play. Right on. Record. So it sounds like you're out playing now. You're in Florida. Um, what are you doing? At, what are you doing right now for shows? Are you doing? Uh, well, well, just tell us. What are you? What are you doing right now? Visiting my sister. Oh, okay. Well, you're in a hotel room. She wouldn't let you stay over. <laughs> uh, no, I couldn't at the time. I have some other business to take care of too. Oh, right we'll on. See, we'll see her soon. So we're glad that you're um, you're healthy and safe. You you told me before we started recording that uh, you actually watched the hurricane. Yeah, I watched it come in. I'm close to a a little bay here, and uh, it was uh, pretty windy, but not not bad. It it came uh, made landfall quite a bit south from where we are, so right. we're okay. Um, in between um, the Suns uh, shows that I mean, well, the ones that you can do over here in uh, North America. Um, what, do, what else are you doing right now? you have anything else on the go? Any um, kind of projects like Richie does with um, Nico? Or not Nico, but um, you know what I'm talking about, Adrian. Uh, new Talos record is out uh, oh. four days ago. And I, that's the main main topic of every uh, uh, interview for the last uh, three weeks. Yeah. So that's been a, a uh, thing we... Uh, uh, it's been incredibly successful so far. Uh, Mind-blowingly great reviews, and uh, everybody's uh, real pleased with it. So we're well, that's excited. awesome. Actually, the reason why I think I overlooked that was because I'd sent you a message through Facebook. Uh, I sent you the uh, the Dio documentary interview I did, and uh, um, you'd noticed it, and then I asked you for an interview, and I, I really couldn't uh, believe that you said yes, and we'll do it tomorrow. So. Sorry about the Talus thing. Um, if I did a bit more of my homework, I would have known on that. Um, <laughs> so what else are you doing to keep busy uh, until you get on the road again? Oh, playing bass. Just playing bass? For hours. Recording, things like that. What did you actually, when we spoke, I think it was about a year and a half ago, um when they when all the lockdowns and everything were happening um i think we talked about this but since this is the first time people see the video um what did you do to uh you know keep busy during that time i recorded uh, over 600 tracks for people all over the world about five or six albums um uh, including the talentless record and the wider dogs record mm -hmm. uh and uh, lots more so it was a busy time for me recording wise. How, how do you do that? Like, I mean, with bass playing, obviously I play guitar, you know, and electric guitar is really technically it's, it's well, not technically, but physically it's a lot easier on the strings on your hands because the action is so low, the strings are so thin with a bass and the way you play bass, how can you, how, how do you keep up the stamina and strength to play that much? Just, uh, just hit it hard and then go back and hit it harder again. 
it's uh it's uh yeah it's a, it's a strength instrument uh, but there's finesse with strength like drums yeah you know yeah, guys guys that hit really hard are not necessarily louder than guys that hit quiet mm -hmm. uh but it's a finesse thing so but yeah a bass requires a a little bit uh, more stamina and your fingers get bigger calluses and all oh yeah but uh it's all good yeah um do you do you keep in touch with eric at all or paul from, i know eric uh, just got came back from around the world he's and he's back on tour right now with uh michael shanker uh yeah i, I sure do yeah we're gonna we, we, we're in touch a lot and uh i'm glad they're both doing well for sure for sure um like I said, it won't keep you too long because uh, you're very uh, generous to give me your time. Um, since this goes out to, um, well, a lot of my subscribers are Canadian, but a few are American too. Um, who would you say um, influenced you uh, bass playing if you had to name somebody and who would be your favorite Canadian band if you had to name one? Unfortunately, it's an illegal question. But, um, so what would you say... Um, as a Canadian artist, somebody that you you kind of uh, looked up to growing up, maybe influenced you? Oscar Peterson. Oscar Peterson, I'm not familiar. From Toronto. Hmm. I know he lived in Toronto, I believe. Okay, well, it's a big city. Yeah, I'm not familiar. Was he a bass player? Wow. Uh, Oscar yeah. Peterson, one of the greatest uh, jazz pianists of all time. Okay. Well, I, I grew up in the 80s, so I kind of got on track music-wise with you and David and that uh, kind of Van Halen thing. So, yeah, I think we're a couple years out, but yeah, so Oscar Peterson. Okay, I'll have to check him out. Um, so is there anybody that you would say that you're looking up to now that not really looking up to that you'd say that's pretty, you know, it's it's on the cutting. He's on the, he or she's on the cutting edge right now, music-wise uh, and bass. Maybe somebody that's um, an unsung hero or somebody that doesn't get the credit they kind of deserve for their talent. Well, I don't know. There's a young lady, uh, I believe she's of Chinese heritage, named Connie. And I see her on Instagram, an unbelievable piano player. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. I, I'm so busy with my own stuff that I don't get a chance to listen to too many other artists or new artists yeah uh, but uh, i know there's a bunch out there that are that are doing well so glad to see a lot, a lot of new life blood uh, come in yeah you just have to go to youtube and there's so much talent just on these people youtube wise because these people are like prodigies but the thing that separates them from maybe you um from them and maybe a billy sheehan is that they have the talent but as soon as they go in front of people they can't do both whereas you have the talent but you also have the, you know, composure to be able to entertain. So, I mean, you, well, getting you... on stage is a whole other uh, world yeah. than sitting in front of a camera. Uh, so, but I do see a lot of great players, but I, I hope they get the opportunity to play on stage because I think uh, uh, they'll, they will find it really expands your understanding of the instrument and your delivery of what you're doing. I've done, uh, I know I'm over, over 5,000 shows, lifetime total. And uh, and that's, I, I consider that a, a, a real asset to what I what I do, having spent that much time on deck, uh, you really learn things you can't learn any other way. Right. So I'm, I, I wish, my wish is for a, a next generation of players to have more opportunities to perform live. And uh, I think, uh, it could be some great uh, potential amazing things happening as a, as a result of that. Right. I, I heard, uh, I interviewed somebody and they told me that, I think it was, I don't know who it was. It was maybe um, Henry Fonda or something. He, before he would go out and do a scene, they would say he would puke his guts out. He always got that stage fright. But it sounds like to you, to me, that you don't have stage fright. Um, being on stage is almost like your second home. I live to play live and I play live to live. That's my uh, thing. That's what I do That's more right. than anything else in more than writing or recording or anything else. Uh, it, being on stage is my thing. And, you know, I've been doing it since 68 or 69, I think. 
Mm. So it's been a, been a long time. But uh, yeah, that's the, the difference between real life and a controlled situation, a rehearsal room or in a studio or uh, what have you in front of video. It's uh, you're, you're faced with a, a whole other set of uh, problems and obstacles and things that you must uh, conquer. Right, right. And it's a it's it's a vital thing. And then singing and playing uh, on stage in front of a live audience, especially a, a hot, sweaty, a crowded place or a huge arena. It's a it's a it's nothing better for me. I absolutely love that. So again, I hope a lot of the younger players get that opportunity. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I really appreciate your time. Uh, was I think I asked you um, if you can play us. Uh, Kind of, well, before I do that, what's the opposite of unsubscribe, Billy? Resubscribe. Oh, that's not it. Unsubscribe? Yeah. Subscribe. Thank you, Billy. Uh, do as Billy Sheehan says and subscribe to the channel so you get these great interviews. Um, do you have an outro riff for us? Maybe something... I have no amp, so you won't hear it. I can hear it. You play loud enough. <laughs> That's not a jazzy. That's awesome. Hey, yeah. thanks for your time, my friend. And uh, I'll put the links to um, Talis and uh, the new album and everything underneath the subscription description bar. Having a hard time here. And uh, yeah, peace out and uh, have a great night. Thanks for having me. Good to see you again. And I uh, hope I see you around. Yeah, I won't lose this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Take okay. care, bro. Take care. All right. <laughs>